Hi Year 9, this is a mini video put together to present one important topic you would have studied in Year 9 if we'd all been at school. This is about a really key area of literature and that is nature. And once you become aware of it, you'll notice it everywhere. Some of the key words we're going to learn are here and some of the words like for example metaphor or motive you may know already. In this video, we are also going to find out what some of the key examples of nature being used in literature are. We're going to find out what are some of the typical natural elements used, what do they mean, what techniques are used, and why you need to know this. So, what are some of the key examples of nature in literature? Nature formed a huge part of Homer's Greek myths and legends. Homer was the man who is most famous for writing these stories down. One example of how nature was represented comes in the description of the Elysian Fields, a most beautiful place that only the most heroic could go to, a land of the shining fields. Many myths were used to explain natural phenomena. So, for example, winter is explained as the time when Demeter, the goddess of the crops, cried, causing everything to die because her daughter was taken by Hades to the underworld. Fast forward 1400 years and Shakespeare was known to use nature and natural imagery extensively in his plays and poetry. In one of his most famous plays, Macbeth, nature is said to die because of the actions of the main character. But Shakespeare celebrated nature too. His famous poems, the sonnets, are full of natural imagery. And one of the most famous, Sonnet 18, begins with the line, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Shakespeare decides he shouldn't because his love is more beautiful. Finally, one group of writers whose whole writing is based on linking human emotion with nature were the Romantic poets. Nearly 200 years after Shakespeare and nearly 1600 years after Homer, the Romantic poets fo focused on nature as a result of writing in the time of the Industrial Revolution. They watched as many rural national uh, natural areas became used for smoky factories and buildings. So they wanted to emphasize the importance of all things natural and pure. Two of the most famous pieces from this era include Coleridge's I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud and John Keats's Ode to Autumn. So what are the typical elements used in, uh, oh, what are the typical elements of nature used in literature? Landscapes are one aspect of nature that we often see in literature and specific elements or objects another. The sea as an element may be used to represent something calm and peaceful or angry, violent and unpredictable. The sun could be joyous or deathly. Trees could be used to symbolise something that has seen many human stories come and go, similarly with mountains. For this reason, they may also represent time. Rivers could symbolise movement of time and energy, Finally, animals are used to symbolise ideas or emotions. Birds, for example, could represent freedom or independence. All of these landscapes, elements or animals could be used once in a piece of writing or over and over again like a motif or a repeated sign. So what are the typical techniques associated with nature? We have pathetic fallacy, giving human emotion to things found in nature, often used with the weather. So, for example, we could talk about the dark clouds gathering if the character was also feeling angry or frustrated with something. We have personification, which is giving human qualities to things that are not human, objects or nature. So we could say that the moon gazed upon the world below. We have zoomorphism, which is giving animal qualities and characteristics to humans. So in a text you're going to read in year 10, Jekyll and Hyde, we talk about um, Hyde's ape-like fury, where he's given the qualities of an ape. 
And finally, we have anthropomorphism, which is giving human qualities to animals. So any of you who read War, War Horse or anyone who's seen The Lion King will know that those animals are given human qualities. So why do you need to know this? Well, the text that we are using in Key Stage uh, 4 all have nature as their main themes. We have uh, Macbeth, we have Jekyll and Hyde, we have love and relationships, and we have unseen poetry. And here is a good example of an unseen poem that uses nature. The poem is called Net Nettles, and although we know nettles are a type of plant, and a nettle has the power to hurt somebody if you touch it and give you a sting, um, this poem is using the plant nettles to describe something else, to represent something else. So I'm just going to quickly read the poem to you and then we, we'll, we can have a think about what that might be. My son, age three, fell in the nettle bed. Bed seemed a curious name for those green spears that regiment of spite behind the shed. It was no place for rest. With sobs and tears, the boy came seeking comfort, and I saw white blisters beaded on his tender skin. We soothed him till his pain was not so raw. At last he offered us a watery grin. Then I took my billhook honed with the blade and went outside and slashed in fury with it, till not a nettle in that fierce parade stood upright any more. And then I lit a funeral pyre to burn the fallen dead, but in two weeks the busy sun and rain had called up tall recruits behind the shed, and my son would often feel sharp wounds again. So in this poem, the poet has used the nettles to represent something to do with his son growing up and some of the pain that his son is going to feel. And in this poem, his son does feel pain. He literally feels the pain of falling into a nettle bed. But because the father, the poet, can't get rid of the nettles permanently, the nettles kind of represent the, the fear that the father has of the pain that the son might experience in his life that he can't always take away because there'll always be something else that will come up that could hurt him. So in summary, nature is usually used to represent or symbolise something. So what you want to do is start with thinking of what it literally means. So pay attention to the landscapes. What, what is the literal meaning of a desert? What's the literal meaning of a mountain? What does it literally mean if you try and walk across it? So think about the, those natural um, uh, elements, the landscape, seas and time. What does it literally mean? And then think about what it could symbolically mean. And then think of uh, those typical techniques, which could be pathetic fallacy or personification, zoomorphism, anthropomorphism, metaphor or motif. So thank you very much, Year 9. Hopefully you've learned something about how writers use nature in literature. And that ends our webinar. Thank you.